And joining us now via Skype is economist at Tedo Peterside. Thank you very much for joining us on the news. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. What should we expect in the coming days? Um, I guess you mean this. Don't worry, I think lockdowns are still everywhere. And the, the, the rest mentioned that, that there would be easy enough in, in most parts of the country from, from next week. And I think um, Kano, the Kano here now, lockdown. So I think we have to adjust to a new normal. That new normal is that even when this this so-called lock, lockdowns are lifted, we are still going to have to practice social distancing, or some some call it um, physical distancing, some activities and some I mean some and, and a way of life that we lived before would have to be completely changed in the area of transportation, in the area of large gatherings, in the area of being able to walk from home, in the area of needless physical meetings. You know, the reason why there were so many flights every day going from Lagos to Abuja or going from all over the country, to airports from Benin to um, Kano to everybody going to Abuja. Please believe me, half those things they were going to Abuja for. In many other countries, you could have achieved the same thing on the telephone or by filling out some forms online. So I think we have to use this, this opportunity, and, you know, our, or this threat, to reconsider and reconfigure how we live our lives, whether it is fair for a government official to make people travel from from Medubri, from Calabar, from Lagos, or from Sokoto to Kamabiti in Abuja for something that everywhere else in the world is done online. I think we have to demand those things from the government. And in any case, the beauty of COVID-19 is that any official who makes people travel to come and meet him stands the risk of being infected by those same people. So it is something that was long overdue. We have to change, it, make our lives a lot, a lot less wasteful, you know, in terms of travel. And then we hope that, therefore, that thereafter movement will be for serious and important things which cannot be done on the phone and which cannot be done online e.g. going to see your doctor for a physical examination. So, so, so we should move around for important things, and then hopefully there will be less traffic as well. All right. Do you think the country is already in a safe place, enough for us to begin to ease the lockdown as has been um, put forward by the president? I think let's be very careful, because even when they said there was a lockdown, it was never 100 percent. If it was 100 percent, I mean, we would all be dead in Lagos because Lagos, I, I mean, cannot feed itself. There are no farms in Lagos Island or in Victoria Island. Lagos, Lagosians only get food because some, some activities are allowed and food is brought in from parts of the country that grow in everything from yams to plantains to uh, and, and so on. So that it's not a case of saying that we, we had before 100% lockdown, and now we are going to move to um, to, to, to complete free free um, movement. I think even what we call the lockdown allowed some movements. All we are talking about now is that let us have some arrangement that involves social distancing, physical distancing, but we only move around for the most important things and the most essential things. No, not for need, needless large gatherings and things like that. So that if you listen to me well, or if, you, if, if, if I'm making myself understood, I think what I'm really saying is that whether you call it a lockdown or whether you call it an easing, as far as I'm concerned, there's only one formula that could have been sustained in this environment. And that's the formula of all of us staying in one place, only moving around for the most important things like meeting our most basic needs. And when doing that, making those movements while obeying the rules of social distancing, physical distancing. So what I'm really saying is that I don't like names like lockdown, easy. Bottom line is that there's only one arrangement that, that could have been sustained. When I say sustained, sustained through 12 months or 18 months. 
So what we're describing now, what, what we call easy, is an arrangement that can be sustained for 12 months. 100% lockdown could never have been sustained for, for more than a few days or, or for a few weeks. So, so we're really saying, let us now move to a new normal where we have the minimal movement, minimal interaction, and we can stay in that mood if need be for six months, 12 months, or 18 months. Because this COVID-19 is not a sprint, it's a marathon. All right, we know that the virus has changed lives and businesses have been disrupted. I mean, life generally as we know it has changed. What do you think will be some of the challenges that most Nigerian businesses will face when they reconvene um, after the loosening of the um, restrictions? I think the biggest challenge for those who have been hit hardest and those that include activities like airlines, where their turnover has gone from to almost zero overnight, or any activity involving very large gatherings. You know, I think basically for those types of activities, it will be a struggle. It will be a struggle for a long time because the clientele will not come back. Even if you announce an easing, the clientele will never come back in the same old way that the, the ones enjoyed. So for them, I mean, I've looked at data in the US. Some airlines are, are, are still flying. But guess what? The number of passengers is 5% of, of what it was before. So, so I mean, they've gone from 100% to 5%. Of course, with, with some more easing, they hope to move to 7.5%, then 10%, then 15 or things like that. But I don't think anybody's thinking about coming back to 70% or 60% in those activities that are directly hit by COVID-19, including transportation. And because of no transportation or no movement, it also means that nobody needs fuel in the, in, the, in, in, in the large volumes like before. So the result is that the price of oil has collapsed. Because the price of oil has collapsed, Nigeria no longer has money for many activities. So there's going to be a general slowing down of the economy. And we definitely know we will go back to an economic recession. Right. So it's for us all manage ourselves as best we can. What, what, what more do you think the government can do to help small businesses get back on their feet? I think that is a challenge for both the government and the private sector to get together and address. But one thing is sure, um, all these contradictory instructions or, or different state governments pronouncing different things, you know, which sometimes are conflicting, also hurts, needlessly hurts small businesses. So we have to make sure that we come out with consistent rules and guidelines that give the small businesses, even large ones, a chance to recover. Now, beyond that, that is in effect, I'm saying that don't make rules that continue to worsen their, their lives need, needlessly. Come, up, come out with the most liberal rules that make sense in this environment. That gives them a chance to begin to reopen their businesses. And then you can decide how much support you have available for them. In effect, give them a chance to help themselves first. And then you can decide to support them. Let me just give you one example. If somebody had a restaurant business and you forced him to close, him or her to close down, then you have to give him plenty of income to make up for that. What I'm advocating is that allow that restaurant to reopen, to practice physical distancing, put the tables apart. Then the person can be able to help himself like the restaurants in Sweden, which were never locked down. They were only required to respect physical distancing. Some restaurants who have enough space around them and through a combination of outdoor tables and various things, begin to get back their volumes. So those you have to help would be those restaurants that are still in need. I'm, I only use, use, use this, this, this as, as an example of how you have to make it possible for the businesses to help themselves. And then the task of helping those who are still in need becomes a, a, an easier task. But if you lock up everybody and, and destroy everybody's business, then those you have to help are just too many. And so your efforts to help them will fail. You can stretch the same argument to, to transportation. Look, people will still need to move around. There must still be public transport, but define rules that encourage physical distancing within right. that public transport. All right. So, yeah.
Oh, sorry. I was just um, trying to get you to round off quickly. Um, if you have to, just do that in 30 seconds, sir. Well, okay, I, I think what I'm talking about, therefore, is the move to what I would call an um, intelligent lockdown or, or an intelligent form of easing, whereby you ensure that we can go about business as best we can without endangering ourselves. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for joining us.